Okay, so this tutorial is um, on the foramina of the skull. So foramina are openings which allow structures to pass through in the human body. So if you just look at this model, you can just see these little holes here, which you put, if you've watched the other tutorials I've done on the skull, you'll have seen them and probably wondered what they were. But these are called for foramen, and the plural is foramina. And again, this is all Latin, coming from the Latin names that they have. So a, for a foramen allows a structure to pass through, so things like blood vessels and nerves. And in the skull, they're really important to note because many important blood vessels pass through these foramina to supply the brain, and several important nerves pass through, the, th through them to carry information to and from the brain. So it's quite a complicated topic. So I'm going to break it into a few parts just to make things a bit more digestible. Um, so this first part I'll just go through, I'll start from, the ex from an external view looking at the skull and the f various foramina um, and then I'll go to an interior view and take a look at them from there. Um, and in the s other parts of this tutorial which will follow on I'll talk about all the different structures that pass through and it's really important that you know about these because med schools in particular love to ask questions about which structures pass through which foramen. So to begin with I'm going to talk about the the foramina that you can see from the outside view of the skull. So starting superiorly, looking into the orbits of the skull, we can see quite a few little holes which are quite important to know. So most medially you've got this little hole here. Um, and this is called the optic canal. And obviously, and but when I talk about these, you've got them on both sides, so they're bilateral. So you've got the optic canal here, which is most medial. You've got this big um, opening here, which isn't technically a foramina, so it's referred to as a fissure, because as you can see, it's a big sort of opening in the skull. So this is the superior orbital fissure, and if you look just inferiorly, you can probably guess you've got the inferior orbital fissure. So in the orbit you've got this optic canal, you've got the superior orbital fissure, and you've got the inferior orbital fissure. And these are bilateral, so they're on both sides. So just to demonstrate, um, what structures pass through. I'll just show you some nerves and some blood vessels. And again, I'll be talking about these in detail in um, the next few parts, because um, there's quite a lot to get through. So as you can see, there's this big nerve here coming through the optic canal. You've got blood vessels, and you've got all these little nerves coming through this fissure. And again, you can see, if we just zoom out a bit, you can see these vessels just emerging. So that's the foramen which you can see in the orbit. Um, just get rid of that. So just moving on to these ones here, just inferiorly, you've got these little foramen which lie in the maxilla. Um, so this is called the infraorbital foramen because it's below infra, below the orbit, um, and you've got these on both sides and these. Um, you get the infraorbital nerves and vessels which pass through these. Um, the supraorbital um, foramen, which is just a little notch here, is also referred to as the supra supraorbital notch. So again, supra above the orbit, and this uh, allows the supraorbital nerves and vessels to pass. So if you just move a little bit laterally. Um, We've got this little hole here, and this is the zygomatico facial foramen. And again, you've got this on both sides, and this allows the zygomatico facial nerve to pass through. But try not to worry about what passes through in this tutorial, just try and remember the names. So, and try and remember them in terms of their position, because it's all terms in anatomy are relatively logically named, so it makes it a little bit easier to try and remember if you remember why. Um, logically why they're named that. So infraorbit, below the orbit, infraorbital foramen. 
and then right down here you've got this little these little holes these foramina and these are the mental foramen and they allow the mental nerve and vessels to pass so those are the those are the foramina you can see um, externally so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a view inside the skull so if you just see what I'm doing I'm just going to get rid of the outside of the skull and we're going to have to take a look from inside so I'm just going to bring it around and we can have a good look okay so we're now looking at the base of the skull from the inside so that I've got rid of the outside of the skull and we're looking down at this base of the skull at the frame and from that perspective so if I just go back to that so at, we've anterior is up here and this is posterior down here just so you can orientate yourselves so just before I start talking about the <coughs> Um, for amino of the skull, I'm just going to talk about the cranial fossa because you'll often hear people referring to these. So again, fossa. Try, anatomy is like another language. It's a lot of words you'll hear now um, repeatedly um, because they actually mean something in Latin. So it's useful to try and remember what these words mean. So a fossa is just a ditch in Latin. So it's like a little hollowing. So if you look from the look from a lateral view, you can see that there are three little ditches here in the brain fossa so you've got the anterior one which is the anterior cranial fossa the middle fossa middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa which is most inferior also so three cranial fossa and it's useful to know about these because people will um, describe structures which pass through various cranial fossa fossae which is plural. Um, so the, this is the ant from from the, from a superior view, which I'm now showing you again, looking down at the skull. You've got the anterior cranial fossa, which is this part, and this anterior cranial fossa um, forms the roof of the nasal cavity. So in the central part, so this central part of the anterior cranial fossa has this. Uh, forms the roof of the nasal ca uh, nasal cavity, and you've got the cribriform plate and the cristigalli, which you might remember from my other tutorials. And then laterally, these lateral portions house the frontal lobes of the brain. So that's the anterior cranial fossa. And then you've got the middle cranial fossa. So it's all this bit, which I'm showing with the mouse. So all around here. This is the middle middle cranial fossa. So posteriorly, you've got the dorsum cellae, this structure here. So that's that's the back of the middle cranial fossa. This dorsum cellae, which you might remember from another tutorial. And then you've got the posterior cranial fossa, right at the back. Um, which contains the brainstem and cerebellum, and it's the most inferior fossa. So just again looking laterally. In أعجبك الفيديو لا تنسى الاشتراك بالقناة والإعجاب والتعليق على الفيديو وأيضا لا تنسى المشاركة. جميع الحقوق محفوظة لقناة Arab Doctors Tube.